Hi, everybody. My name is Matthew Pose uh, with Pose Acoustics. I'm answering questions again. Uh, somebody has donated. His name is Howard Sky Ivies 4184 donated 14 99 pounds. Uh, in a previous video or another video, I said euro. It was pounds. I looked it up. Um, I should have known better. So where confusion lies for the end user consumer is that you ask 100 experts the same question, you'll likely get 101 opposing opinions. So my monetized question for you today, Matthew, is when, what are your thoughts on vertically stacking speakers in the two-channel setup? Danny from Geo Research strongly discourages the practice, claiming anomalies with cone filtering beaming, and phase issues, whereas Norman Hunter, chief engineer at RHEL, regularly promotes the concept, with many of RHEL's speakers designed and built to be vertically stacked. Another well-respected YouTube uh, reviewer advises that for every action, there, there are consequences, some good, some bad. The end user has to decide for themselves whether the pros outweigh the cons. All right. So I think that there are different points being made here. So vertically stacking subwoofers is very different from vertically stacking like full range speakers. I don't know what Danny was referring to, but if he's referring to vertically, I've actually done something, I think it was a video on what we called flip stacking, <clears throat> where I included measurements to show people how bad of an idea that is. So no, you should not be stacking speakers as in full range speakers on top of each other. That will not yield positive results. You are gonna get more output, yes, but you're gonna get a whole lot of comb filtering you're gonna get a very lousy frequency response. If you need more output, buy better speakers. Don't stack two on top of each other. Now, subwoofers, very different issue. There are not comb filtering issues because the wavelengths are so large that they are actually physically close enough to each other. In fact, I should show you a picture of my own system right now, which has stacked subwoofers right now on each side that are separated by four feet, I think it is, something like that. Um, and it's done on purpose in order to create a proper wavefront. So subwoofers can be stacked, and RHEL's approach to stacking subwoofers has advantages. If you do a line array of subwoofers, floor to ceiling, you actually get rid of vertical reflections because you create a, um, it wouldn't be in the width here, planar, but at least floor to ceiling, you've got a planar wavefront, and so you don't get any reflections off of the ceiling and the floor. And that's a good thing because you get rid of those interactions. And if you did it across this way too, so you have, they don't have to be right on top of each other. They can be spaced out. So if you have an array across the front, what happens is you don't get any sidewall reflections or ceiling floor reflections. You have a planar res uh, response. So um, Norman Hunter is not incorrect. And Danny is also not incorrect because we're talking about two different things. RHEL doesn't make speakers. They make subwoofers. And typically, Danny, I believe, is talking about speakers. So hopefully that's helpful um, and helps you to understand my approach and my, my recommended approach uh, to speaker stacking. Like I said, I think that um, what happened here was some confusion. I also want to address really quickly the idea of the 100 experts gives you 101 opposing opinions. I work with experts um, in RP22, RP23, RP1. I work with experts. I've worked with experts in other groups like that as well. And of course, my colleagues and myself included are considered experts within our own rights, right? We don't actually disagree. I don't think anywhere near as much as you might think we do. I think here's the issue. There's a lot of self-proclaimed experts on forums, many of which are not actually experts. There's a lot of people that make speakers who call themselves experts, but are not actually that knowledgeable about acoustics. And so they're not really experts. And there's a lot of people who, um, who are experts who just, it's not in their nature or in their best interest to spend a lot of time on YouTube or forums or social media, period. And so what happens is when you actually pull these experts in together, I think what you would see is that typically everybody agrees a lot more than they disagree. And often the things they disagree are so fine grained that I don't know that you would find it to be a big disagreement. So as an example, if I was to go to RP1, which has numerous speaker manufacturers, and I was to raise the issue of what do you guys think about stacking speakers as in full range speakers, I'm fairly positive without question that zero of them would say that's a good idea. I also believe that if I was to say to that same group of experts, which includes, as I said, acoustics experts, speaker manufacturing experts, and engineers, what do you think about stacking subwoofers? 
I don't think any of them would have a concern with that. They might debate whether it makes more sense to stack them versus spread them throughout the room if you've got limited quantities, but I don't think they're going to have an issue with the idea of stacking them in the in, in the notion of it causing, for instance, any kind of problems like beaming phase issues or you said comb filtering, but comb filtering. Comb like you comb your hair. Um, so... I, I think there's less disagreement than you would think. And the, the disagreements you're seeing tend to be more from people who express strong opinions that are not necessarily experts. So I hope that's helpful. All right. Thank you. Keep watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Subscribing to my channel helps a lot. So please, it's, it doesn't cost you anything, just a little bit of time. These donations are really helpful. The more donations I get, the more I can use that. That money actually goes right back into these videos for the most part. It's not going into my pocket. You're not buying me a steak dinner, nor do I make enough money for that. Um, it typically is being used to pay for things like either upgraded equipment for the videos, replacing equipment that goes bad because that does happen. Um, and then the more common one actually is it's I'm, I'm hoping to use that money when I start getting enough of it to pay for professional editing and even possibly professional videography so I can do better videos. So thank you very much. Appreciate everything you guys do.